I've had this out. Yeah. And you can see all the ball bearings and rolls and mm -hmm. everything there. Everything's spot on. Yes. That goes in there. You can see the actual face of that's lovely. There's no chattering mm -hmm. nakedness on it. Yeah. So that will go back in there. So it turns three wheels. Three yeah. wheels. And it doesn't. Turns, yeah, it's a spare clutch for the starter. Right, yeah, so that goes in there. Mm -hmm. and then obviously, this has got to go in here now. Right, yeah, so you've now put the cases back together again yeah. with the correct sized... The correct sized chain. Primary chain there. She's there. She's there. F yeah. 50, 50 links. Not 52. Not 52, that was yeah. it. And now you've got to fit this. Yeah, this is the... Uh, obviously this is the uh, drive for the, for the jack shaft or secondary shaft. Right. So the crankshaft drives the that. shaft through there. Yes. This shaft. Yeah. That you need to slide in. And uh, obviously on, on one end you've got the, the primary gear which drives the clutch. Right. So to fit this I've just got to remove that, uh, that gear. Shaft, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's kind of similar but different from the Z, the big Z that I've been working on. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got the transmission in there now. The transmission's all in, yeah. uh, all reassembled, go in, checked. But it goes in sideways. Yeah, it goes in th through here. Yes. And that's got to assemble do it now actually that yeah. goes in somehow you've got to get it in here yeah um, yeah we we're saying that um this is possible apparently with the engine in the frame but it ain't not it's not easy because you've got to tip the bike over it's quite awkward to do yeah. this and yes. I'm, I'm just gonna have to bear with me but yes. it, go, it drops down yes the chain goes over goes over yeah obviously maybe with a 52 link chain it's easier but uh, this is a shorter chain yeah shorter chain so you've got to try and Swangle this in. There we go. There you go. And spin it. It's catching now on the gearbox. So, oh, so Oops, there you go. So it's gone. No, it's always when it's on camera, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's what's happening anyway. So maybe I've just thought of something. Maybe the uh, this gear goes on second. Well, it goes separately. Separately, we'll just yeah. check that start clutch is okay there, yeah. which it is. Yeah, just show me the start clutch again because it's quite interesting the way it works. It's got like three springs and three little drums. Of... Yeah, you've got a, three little rollers that are spring loaded. Yeah. And uh, they run on there. Yes. They're off centre side, so forget that. In the one, one way it's bit of free wheels, and yes. the other way the rollers lock up. Lock yeah. up. Yeah, and that's how they work. That's how so the clutch, so rather the starter motor can start the engine, but then the engine once it's running can't spin the starter motor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's just see if this. I can't remember how you do this. Okay. Jumping so, the gun really because I normally read the manual. Yes, uh, but now I'm here. You're trying to do it. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll step back. So that goes there. Okay. You've, you've done it now. Yeah. And then, then then we get this gear in. Yeah. Which has a uh, shim up against it here. So that has to go in there. By the way, I'm sure you can't tell, but this is being filmed by my camera, by my uh, phone, which isn't ideal. Yeah, but I've just popped over to do something, so. so. This goes in here. I can just turn that to get that in. There we go. Turns. Yeah, one way, but not the other. Grips that way. You, yes. can see, you can see it turning the crank there now. Yes, yes. So that's now all in. Mm -hmm. And then I've got to slide this shaft the in. Shaft in, yes. Now that bearing can go in there. And then I've got to knock this shaft through. Mm -hmm. That washer yes. butts up against this gear, mm -hmm. just to you know stop it from floating. Yes. Uh, when I knocked it out, you knock it from that side, yes. from this side. Yes. When you knock it back in, you've obviously got to knock it from that side. Yes. There's a bearing there which sits in here up yes. against that shoulder. Yes. To so knock it in now, ideally I need to remove this uh, this gear. This gear, yeah. Uh, so what I'll probably do is clamp that in my vice in soft jaws and just so knock just, just the shaft. Just drift the, it out, yeah. Drift it out with a yeah. copper. Cop and then that can go in there. Yeah, that can slide in. And then the sump can go on, I think, and then you don't... Well, yeah, I just... Uh, oh, it, where's the oil pump then on this thing? The oil pump's got to go on after this. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a... The oil pump bolts in here. Uh, the bolts go through here. Mm -hmm. To hold the oil pump in. Right, yes. Um, that's the oil pump drive there, that, mm -hmm. that little sprocket there. Yes, yes. It's down here and the oil pump picks up on it. Yeah. And it drives the oil pump. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, that's all right. So there's the engine coming back together again, and hopefully soon that will be back in yeah. the frame. You can see now if I line that up, put yeah. my finger in there. Yeah, it's, it's you tight. can see the shaft is the chain's perfect yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, as you know, be. as it should be. Mm -hmm. Whereas before it was it didn't work. It was too long. <laughs> it was too long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, so we'll, we'll um, continue the video when this is all done and hopefully that is back in the frame. And I guess you'll you'll put it as it is now without the head on. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, put the, I'll put the oil pump in. Yes. And the sump, maybe, I might put the sump on. Yes. Probably will. Yeah. Put the sump on. Yeah. And then uh, I'll need your assistance oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody. to lift it back in yeah, the yeah. frame. And just, just reverse what we did last time. Uh, since I last saw you, I've yes. been to Jeff's and he's machined all these stainless spacers. Yes, I needed. Which I've measured and he's made them to my dimensions. Dimensions, all the stainless steel spacers. Yeah. So when the engine goes back in, it can be, it fully, be fully tightened yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the first and last time, well, second and last time. <laughs> yeah, second time, right. Right, and that's fine. Huh? Hang on. Okay. Right, so you've done it now. Yes. You've got that uh, shaft in place. Yeah, put the jack shaft in and. Uh, Everything's okay? Everything's okay. That's the. Started clutch there, yeah. And if I turn that, you can see one way it free wheels, and this way it turns the engine, right? Fantastic, yeah. Which it wasn't doing before because the chain was the, the wrong size, not over the crank, yes, because it was too yes. long. And now you yes. can see the there's hardly any slack in that chain no, there, no, that's the a brand new chain on fixed sensors, right? Great, that's and it. you had to press this, um, this little cog off, yeah, I just had to. Knock that off the uh, end of this shaft here. So that goes on the outside of the case. Yeah, that's the drive. That's your primary drive to the clutch right. basket. Oh, if, oh, I spin, oh. if I spin the yeah. engine round yeah. now, yeah. Right. there's the shaft installed with a bearing. Yeah. That washer goes on. Yes. There's a plate goes on here now, a metal plate, a retaining plate to stop that bearing moving moving outwards. Yes. And also two of the bolts are long, one's short there, yes. two are long that go through here, yes. and there's a very long probably about 30 mil long dowel mm -hmm. and they protrude out here mm -hmm. and they locate the oil pump right okay which is driven by that little gear there yeah, gear. and then once I put this plate on and they put the oil pump on I can then slide that on and there's a circle that holds it holds it in place it's and then the sump can go on yeah then the sump can go on then and then the whole thing can go back in and the frame and then the engine can go back in the frame right, right. Well, I'm sure Theroux will be very happy to know that I'm sure he will right right so we'll carry on then with the video once that's back in the frame. Yeah, we will. Right, so here we are, it's about a week later, and I see Les, you've been busy. Uh, so you've got this um, aluminium rod in placement of a swing arm, uh, of a shock. Yes. Just to try and work out the clearances, just, I guess. Just working out the length of the rear shock yes. that I need. Yeah, okay. So Jeff's made me a couple of those at 280 mil sensors. Okay, which you may have to 300 yet, not yeah. sure. Okay, I have to wait and see until the wheels are on the bar. Yeah, yeah, gotta get it to okay. the wheels to work uh, before I work that out. parts of the engine. And you've now got the bottom end back in the frame, which yeah. we didn't have last time. Well, Jeff hadn't made the stainless spaces, which he now has. So yes. It's all, all these spaces here, here, two here. Yeah, at the back. There's one underneath at the back. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, so they're all done. So the engine's been apart, and now of course you're starting to rebuild it. Yeah, I put the correct the correct primary chain in it. Yes, yes. So you've actually found a problem, I believe, with the clutch. Yeah, the the clutch uh, the the clutch basket's got the usual Z650 Z750 backlash. Yes. And we obviously take them all to Jeff's, and he does his magic on them. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Because inside they have these rubber bushes which wear, which, which shrink. Yes, and it gives the backlash. Yes. So when these are running, they sound like a bag of spanners if you right. don't address that. So that's now being addressed. Yeah. Um, now you've also, down here we've got this rather lovely bottom yoke. Yeah. Um, nice big sort of chunky thing. All hollowed out nicely. Yeah. And that's the and top there. you were going to just fit that to the frame and then you found a slight problem. A slight problem, yeah. Which is what? We have the bottom bearing here. Yes. Obviously that's the race that needs to be knocked in there. Yes. Should be an interference fit. Yes. Except this isn't, it just falls in. <laughs> as you can hear. Which isn't good. No, it's not good. So now, why do you think that's It is the correct bearing before anyone says it in the comments. Yes, yes. It is a 52 mil bearing and mm -hmm. that should be 52 but it's actually measuring it a fraction over. 52 and a quarter. Perhaps it's been worn about something like that, we don't know. Well, I've, I've measured it with Bavernia, it's not the best of things to no, measure it with no. but I know it's bigger. Right. So now we, we can use some what we've used in the past is bearing Loctite. Yes. And we so need to pull it in. Hold it. And hold it with a stud and a washer mm, or a until comb sets, yeah. until the Loctite goes off. Yes. And, and then, then we can carry on with the build. Yes. Also the bottom bearing needs spacing up 
slightly about yeah. two and a half millimeters right so that this face will mm -hmm. clear here yes okay good. so jeff needs to make me a little collar right which we sort of knew about before yeah he well he did he did, he, warm, sure. he did warm me when i took the yoke away yesterday yes. yeah. when i brought it back here he said you mm -hmm. might you'll have to measure it and work out whether you need a collar or not yes well we do yes so and i believe you're talking about not a problem but just a question mark over some o-rings which live down here that's right here apparently no one seems to know well this is a, this, go. this is obviously an 810 turbo engine yes it had the incorrect base gasket on which was paper yes, yes it's not the good. genuine one is here which is a metal gasket yes a sport right so that's the correct metal but right. there's also on the micro parts microfiche it shows two o-rings but it doesn't really show them where they show go. the location the exact location i'm assuming it's these the two, two yeah they go around these two studs here yeah i've got the o-rings it's mm. just working out yeah where they go because it's clear those central holes for the studs these are bigger holes are bigger than, than the, the, ones the, here. the outer yes. the outer eight yeah so yeah. we think they're on the two front ones we even think those two are slightly bigger than these rear two yeah. so i'm assuming they go there and there yes yes uh, why they put them there i'm not we sure don't know. so once you've sorted that out then it's time to fit the um the block can go the on block there. and the, the head and so on. on yes yeah um it had a it, when i stripped it they used the pattern gasket set and all pattern all rings so yes. replaced all these all rings here with genuine with genuine ones yes as i'm going along i'm just replacing right all the gaskets with the correct right. ones and one thing that i noticed having been working on a similar engine is i really like this this um yeah. sort of breather top because the breather exit is going this way yeah. rather than straight up the plenum the plenum chamber is here on the turbo yes so they couldn't have it coming up vertically yeah I really so like they that. put it out sideways yeah they've also incorporated this uh lug yeah. and on the bottom of the plenum there's a rubber tube like a grommet uh, right and it, it, it locates the plenum so right. that it can't move it can't move yeah so we like that it's a great idea it's, it's really rare i guess they're only made for the turbos only made for the turbo yeah right okay amazing right so next time we see you then let me just step back a bit um that engine should be back together again yeah I've, you... got a, I've got a shopping list of yeah. more parts My, yeah these temporary bolts here need replacing and these yeah, they're nuts. Divisional bolts, so yeah. they're divisional bolts yeah replaced with nice uh, nice stainless and these nuts here need replacing yes uh, so yeah i've got a shopping list to, to, to sort to out right sort so let me uh, walk over here a sec so i can get you back in shot there you go and then hopefully the top yoke will be finished i think it's finished yeah. putting these polishing he's, he's in the middle of rubbing it down before yes. polishing yeah yes. he's prepping it now right okay uh, um, also we need to speak to the owner about what handlebar risers he wants yes um because rather than jeff make some which will be costly mm -hmm. you can buy some uh, you can buy them on ebay for 20 quid yeah yeah you can't make um, it fast. but they do them in different colors so now we need to speak to uh drew the owner to see what color he wants mm -hmm. i probably got for plain silver yeah right so that's it so far and yeah. we'll come back next week and hopefully see more progress more progress yeah great see you later yeah <laughs>